Marilyn Lanfear is our next presenter. She is an artist, native Texan who grew up in Corpus, has lived in San Antonio since the 60s, except for five year stints in New York City and in Oregon, where she taught at Lewis and Clark College and the University of Oregon. She has taught at UTSA, the Art Institute, and San Antonio College. She has a BFA and MFA from UTSA. When, what? When Marilyn moved to, I could have really messed that one up. When Marilyn moved to Manhattan, thinking that she needed to live in the mecca of the arts, she realized that the stories she had heard in Texas and used to entertain her friends were interesting and even more exotic. So she is continuing her family's storytelling tradition in her work using a variety of media, including lead, wood, stone, artist-made paper, words, and even sometimes paint. Marilyn is definitely a visual storyteller, and all of her work is informed by the fact that she is a woman from a particular place. And she is going to tell you about that tonight. Please welcome Marilyn storyteller and made surrogate portraits of particular people, often in the form of chairs or, or clothing. I used lead, wood, stone. All of those materials are not chosen arbitrarily. The concept determines the medium. I use objects of um, material culture. Once I responded to what I saw, but then I began to wonder, what does it mean? And that's what I have in mind now. Titles are important to me. I'm a collector. This is grandmother's uh, library table. It took me three years, all the time I lived in Portland, uh, to find enough swing frames to fit in this piece. Sometimes my work even speaks. Daddy's chair a corner chairperson to be worn by two members of the family. The two members of the family must each keep an arm around the other, and they tell Daddy's famous funny story about the snakes in the medicine show. Actually, it doesn't really matter what they say because it's a, the sharing of the story that's important, not the details of the story. And this is Aunt Marjorie's story. She was the last of seven children. She was one when she was one. She toddled into the fire. When she was two, she moved into town. When she was four, she threw a hissy fit on the front porch because she wanted to go out with her dad. He came back up the steps and gave her a swat with his glove. She ran under the cook table many a time to save herself from her mother's uh, peach tree limb. She, when she was 14, she went to the Pentecostal church to laugh and stayed to join. She already has her tombstone in place. Her new heifer is named Tara Marie Nicole after Sister Nancy's granddaughter. This is Mother's Chair. Purchased by Mr. and Mrs. Rittersbacher when they built their Corsicana home in 1922, the chair was upholstered in brown mohair. A matching sofa and wing chair completed the suite. Bought with the house in 1923 by Aunt Opal and Uncle Fred after Mr. Rittersbacher went bust and Uncle Fred found oil. Uncle Fred bought minerals instead of taking leases. Some of his wealth are still producing. This is Uncle Clarence's three wives. <laughs> Each one of these uh, uh, is 12 feet high. You can figure out how wide it is. Um, this is Aunt Billy, the first wife, and they lived in New London, Texas, which was prospering even during the Depression. 
because the East Texas oil field had been discovered nearby. One day, just before school let out, the janitor plugged in his sander and the building exploded, killing some 300 teachers and children. The school had been using wet gas or green gas to heat the building and uh, that gas had no odor. So the gas that accumulated under the school building exploded. Natural gas, um, the uh, legislature mandated that natural gas be given an odor after that time. That kind of rotten egg odor. Um, and Adolf Hitler sent a letter of condolences to the school after that happened. This was Aunt Jerry, the second wife. Um, she married and they were married during World War II, uh, where Uncle Clarence was a, uh, I think he was a cook in the army in, uh, during World War. Uncle Clarence married again after that Unfortunately, that uh, uh, marriage ended in divorce. Then Uncle Clarence married Aunt B. And um, I guess he had a lot of divorces during wartime, but uh, he, uh, he and Aunt B were married in Cutoff, Louisiana, and lived in Cutoff for 41 years. He worked for Humble Oil Company, which is Exxon, and initially his job was to uh, go out in a boat and take the men and supplies out to the wellheads. Exxon uh, actually educated my three cousins. Claire is a research scientist at, Buff at Tufts University. Wayne is a stockbroker in um, New Orleans and Debbie is a school teacher. Now, now that my father has died, somebody has got to, I, I think the mantle has fallen on me. One day I overheard my two daughters arguing about who got to be the, the teller, the storyteller after I was gone. Someone has to keep the story. Narrative is the moving force of my visual language, with the history of my Texas family at its core. All of my details are informed by my inheritance as a woman from a particular place, and they're mostly true. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, I have a couple of questions here. For a visual storyteller, you weren't talking at all there about process or how you did this or I did the tiles with this crowd and things like that. No, no, but I, I have to learn. I have to learn a lot of new things all the time because I, I didn't know how to sew buttons until I, I found I needed to know. And then I learned. But you teach. Art. I teach art, but you know, mostly painting, drawing, things like that. Printmaking. And what's the story with your Uncle Clarence? Uh, it's true. Uh, Uncle Clarence wasn't um, um, undecided. He was married. <laughs> he, he was married for 41 years to Aunt B. It uh, just happened that the first two. I, you know it's happened to me, so I completely <laughs> yeah. Do you do uh, commissions, by the way? Because I've had a few wives I'd like to put on. <laughs> uh, and are you still still working on your artwork? Yes. And, and you're like 23 now, I believe, right? Are you still? I'm 25 now. 25. <laughs> Please give it up for Marilyn Lanfear. <laughs> <laughs> 